Dudes Close. Mastering Madden. Part 2 of the complete guide to cover 4 in Madden 19, split field coverages. Expanding our match quarters defense for disguise and defending against emerging cover 4 beaters. We showed you in the last video how cover 4 palms leaves you better protected against trips while also giving you freedom to be aggressive and user the weak side safety. And although Palms leaves you vulnerable against certain rare route combinations and certain 2x2 two two sets, we showed you that checking into quarters can be an easy fix. In my opinion, Palms out of the big nickel over G front is the best base defense in the game for many reasons. You don't need too many adjustments to be sound against most passing concepts, so it's gonna be great for beginners all the way through to experienced uh, Madden players. You're very aggressive against the run with what is effectively a nine man box. You have great stock pressure by slanting the D-line towards the three technique, and I made a video on that. You can get enough athletes on the field to run with any receiver. So this is a coverage that you know, really requires all 11 of your players to be involved. And you know the, the nickel fronts this year, you're able to sub in your, your safeties at linebackers and you can get some real athletes out there. And you know, finally, it confuses the hell out of your opponents. Now, with that, that being said, with the recent popularity of cover four match, more and more people are developing plays to attack it. And many of them are actually really tough, but luckily we're flexible. And there are some really nice coverage checks that we can mix in uh, if we're committed to this too high matching quarters type defense, namely with split field coverages. Very few people know how to use these coverages and even fewer know how to attack them consistently. And so this video will put you back ahead of the curve Adding to the original point of the series, you know, minimizing the terrible about match quarters in Madden and maximizing the amazing. So there's a number of things that I want to show you here and really just to drive in um, some of these issues and the need for switching things up, uh, I want to show you a few things. So first of all, we're just going to come out and cover four palms here, the big nickel over G. And then really I could come into any formations here, but you know, I might as well go trips tight end for the sake of the meta. So other than the fact that staying static, no matter how good your defense is, will get you beat, there are some issues with Palms quarters that can be exploited. And so we'll need to find an answer for them without necessarily having to abandon the, the coverage completely. Okay, there are a lot of really good things about this match cover four. So when your opponent you know, naturally finds uh, an exploit against it or a coverage beater, uh, we don't necessarily want to have to switch all the way to cover three or all the way to cover two or something like that. We want to keep the good things with it and just fix some of the bad things with it. So the first issue that we face is how we can deal with drag, slants, and other crossers from the number one wide receivers. Because although I do find that the coverage does a really good job at you know being aggressive underneath on certain drags and slants and stuff like that, um, from the inside wide receivers, from the number ones, so when I say that I mean over here, the guy closest to the boundary, so number one on the strong side and number one on the weak side, if they're running those crossers, um, these coverages don't do a good job at covering that. And, I, and I've seen it a lot using it. So I'll show you a, a number of demonstrations. So we'll go ahead and this is Palm's coverage. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put everybody on vertical routes except for the number one over here. And I'll get my user off this guy. And this could have very well been a drag or a deeper crosser. It'll show the same thing, same thing under different formations. Now we know that against trips checks for palms, um, the default, or I guess the only trips check that you can use is special. And in that case, the cornerback there has that wide receiver the number one on the strong side, man to man anywhere he goes. So if it's a smoke screen, he's man. If he's vertical, he's man. If he's slant, he's man. If he's drag, he's man. Everywhere he goes, he's man. So, and we also know from the last video that this slant or a drag will get big time separation because that cornerback is playing off and the reaction animation he gets really isn't good. So let me just get these ends off their pass rush. So I have a little bit of time. So you see he has you know a good deal of separation and you have acres of space to work with here. So let me just quickly show you guys the replay here, see what is going on. So again, you get a huge amount of separation here. I mean, obviously Moss is really, really good, but even lesser receivers will do the same just because that animation doesn't work out nicely. 
that you can press to do a little bit better there or even reman that cornerback to do a little bit better on the um, on the coverage there. But otherwise, you know, you're going to be exposed. And so he has to carry him all the way across the field. The three receiver hook does a good job of helping out. But the quarter flat and, you know, the three receiver hook, they give up. Leaving the wide receiver wide open over here. Now, I think I don't know if that's done by on purpose or by accident. I don't know if that's a glitch where that quarter flat isn't going to help out or if he means to not help out because he thinks that he knows that that wide receiver has uh, is it should be covered man to man by that cornerback. I don't know why he wouldn't help out, but there's there's some things that would leave me to believe lead me to believe that um it is a glitched case. Um because if we do the same thing except this time we run the slant from the number 2 receiver, I'll show you how well the quarter flat plays it if we have time in the pocket. So he carries them all the way to the sideline. Now there are some issues there in terms of, and issues in general in this game, in terms of a wide receiver going full speed across the field and a zone defender waiting for him and then starting starting back up again. It's hard for him to match that. But in that case, you know the route worked out anyway. He, he could match that. Same thing from, if I do it from number three, you'll see the quarter flat does a really good job all the way with him and forces a tight catch there. So I'm thinking in that case, you know, nobody on number two or three, if they're, if they're coming on slants or, or drags, nobody actually has the man to man. So in that case, the quarter flat has the responsibility and see how nice he plays them underneath there. I love these quarter flats because, you know, you have the aggressiveness possibly of a, like a hard flat, but you can also be covering deep and helping out um, over the middle a lot of versatility with these quarter flies and they continue to get better every single patch um, other things we can show you that against two by two this is even worse so against two by two we know that underneath routes like a slant or a drag won't get matched man to man by the cornerback Okay, and then in this case, still that quarter flat on the opposite side will ignore him because he's the number one. So we'll show you this and we'll show you how wide open he gets, assuming I have the time in the pocket. Even those contains come in screaming. <laughs> but yeah, you see how wide open he got. So I think, I feel like that might be an issue. And so I would, I would like for that to get patched because there's no reason for it just because he's the number one wide receiver doesn't mean he should be ignored on those crossing routes or those drag routes. Um, so that's definitely an issue, and there's there's a nice way that we can check for that. Other things I want to quickly show you. Um, let, let's go ahead and, and run it from the other side, number one from this side. So in that case, it actually worked out okay. Because there's something you should know about how quarters and palms play a tight number one here. Where if he's you know right on the end of the tackle or even if he's kind of on the numbers there, they'll play this sort of inside out technique. So this is a bit of a tangent, somewhat related to what we're talking about here. But let's say if I put him on a flat, that cornerback on his side is going to take him. You know, a bit of a delay, but he, he comes out there. Now, if I run him in inside, let's put these guys on other verticals just so we don't get confused. That safety on that side actually is the one that takes them. So this is something that you should keep in mind if if you're playing against trips tight end or the the y, the flex trips other formation that's similar to it. Forget what it's called. And if you're using the weak side safety over here you need to know that you have a responsibility to carry that drag there. So it's something you might want to think about. Maybe you want to put this three receiver hook on man coverage on him or, you know, just leave that safety alone and, and use the middle linebacker here. Also, if that guy goes vertical, I believe they actually just both end up taking him. Yeah, just like that. 
Okay, so that that's how you play. Um, that's how that corner and that safety play him on this kind of inside out thing, which is nice, and it allows us. Um, let's just you know I, I could quickly check to that that uh, PA crossers play from here, but let's do something just somewhat kind of similar here. If you are, say, using this safety here. And if this tight end goes in, or even if he stays into block, that means this cornerback is free to help out. And he actually does a really good job at covering that deep crosser that causes so many issues. You know, this, you know what play I'm talking about, like the most popular play. And so you're free. You don't even have to use that. And so you can come down and be aggressive on that drag or help in um, to other routes that might come across. So that's something to note. I'll probably go into detail in, into another video, but that's just something I wanted to say. Um, before, you know, we go finish with this, I want to, you know, really cover my bases here. So I also want to show you against the situation where this guy is split out. Now this cornerback is man to man on him. And in this case, it's actually Deion Sanders on, on a slower tight end. So he might be able to catch up here, but I'll show you how the opposite side quarter flat and the se strong safety here, ignore him, man. LT. <sighs> okay, let's show that again. Let's put him on a drag, why not? So see, the quarter flat kind of starts to help out, but he ends up just ignoring him. Anyway, in that case, Deion Sanders way faster than Gonzalez, and you're actually well off there. And you know, in, in some cases, you're going to have the matchup, and you're not really going to be exposed, but... There's still a little bit to be desired there. Now, a good way that I found to, you know, mitigate this, and let's just go back to Devils in Sale, is with Cover Six. Okay, so Cover Six out of Big Nickel over G. So now again, you know, a note I made on the la last video is that you want to have auto flip on, uh, just so you don't have to do the flipping yourself. So what you're going to have is you're going to have the quarter side or the cover four side uh, on the strength of the offense. Okay, so if it's trips, the cover four side is going to be aligned to the trips. If it's two by two, it's going to be aligned to where the running back is. Okay, so wherever you have the most wide receivers. And then on the weak side here, you have uh, essentially cover two. The vertical hit, hook, cloud flat, and the deep half here. So this does a better job because if you have a slant coming from the weak side, this quarter flat actually helps out because he thinks that there, there isn't any man coverage on that number one over there. And then if you have a slant coming in from the strong side, well, then you have this cloud flat here, which is, uh, you know, a pretty much a uh, spot drop zone. And, and we'll go over how that works out. So. Yeah, in terms of alignment, you definitely always want this auto flip, leave the cloud flat on the weak side. So let's let's kind of go over all that again. Let me get off of him. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Run the slant, and you see how he runs right into the cloud flat, and he gets intercepted. Other things from the other side. Let's try it. And let's just go ahead from a wide split here. I might not have time in the pocket. So you see how the quarter flat actually takes him the entire way. Actually, sorry, the quarter flat doesn't take him. It's the three receiver hook. And this is a good point that I need to make. Cover six plays special on this side, meaning that this cornerback is man-to-man -man on this wide receiver. This quarter flat is man-to-man -man with number two if he's vertical. And then this safety is man-to-man -man with number three if he's vertical. So that means if you have three verticals, you don't have a flat zone over there, which means that it's actually a three receiver hook that p picks up the guy coming across. So if I were you, uh, running cover six and you know when I run cover six I always use her the vertical hook because he doesn't really have any responsibilities because that three receiver hook in a lot of cases he will have to take that flat 
And as a user, you don't necessarily want to go all, all the way out to the flat. So let's just show that again. Um, you know, it doesn't even need to be streaks, you know, it can be a corner route here, so. And I'll I'll run him from from this from this end right here. So in some cases, although that three receiver hook comes down and covers him, in some cases he's a little bit late. So you do have the option that if you want to be really aggressive, like say in a case and it's third and short, fourth and short, you can actually turn this three receiver hook into a hard flat. You have a little bit of flexibility there. So in that case, if if these guys are all vertical, you'll have the hard flat playing there no matter what. So that's that's a nice little uh, coverage check that you can make within this coverage check. Okay, other things. Um, let's go ahead and show you all the other things. Let's show you from the number two. And I, I shouldn't have... But yeah, obviously you can tell if I run a slant from that side, it's going to go right into that cloud flat. And if I run it from the weak side, that quarter flat or that three receiver hook is going to pick it up. Let's actually run a, a complete mesh here and I'll show you how things kind of turn out here. Let's go a mesh from the number three on the strong side and the number one from the weak side. So in that case, um, this guy didn't really have, like he could pass the vertical off from number two to the safety because the safety had nothing to do and then he, he'd come down. He'd come down a little bit late, but he's, he'd be there. Okay, he wouldn't ignore him again, like he would be in cover four palms. Let's do a situation where these guys are vertical and number two is meshing. In this case, that flat can be a little bit more aggressive. And let's do this case where number one is meshing. So again, in this case, the three receiver hook has the duty because, again, we're in special here. This nickel and this safety have number two and number three vertical. So all that's left to help out is the three receiver hook. Okay, and again, if you want to be really aggressive, you just put them in that hard flat, hard flat there so that you can be covered. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so you're really good. So you're going to be good against, you know, crossing routes from definitely from the strong side because that cloud flat's going to be there to really trap your opponent. And then from the weak side, you're good too because you have the three receiver hook that can help out or you can have that, that quarter flat helping out. Some things I like to do when I'm running cover six because it is pretty obvious sometimes that you're running cover six where the cover four side is going to be way out here and the cover two side, the guys line up five yards. So sometimes, you know, you can leave it or I'll press. I don't think I can press now that I move those guys around. But what I'll tend to do is just, you know, press and then they don't really know which side it is unless they really understand how it's aligned. And then from there, you can manually move these guys back so that they're kind of at the same depth. Or, you know, you can, if you're aggressive, you can leave them pressed or you can invert it like this way. So it looks like the quarter side is on the other side. Um, but that's, that's if, you're, if you're okay with that matchup over there with the press. So that's a quick thing I want to talk about with, um, with this guys. And we'll get into that later on with how we mix in cover nine in certain occasions. So that's how we can use the cover six to protect against some of these meshing concepts and some of these crossers. Uh, one last thing I want to note about cover six is a change that was made in the last patch. So I'll go deep attack here, big nickel, cover six. So this deep zone, this half zone, isn't actually totally spot drop. So in the last one, they, cut, they added its ability to run with deep posts. Okay, so against the cover two, that deep half would just ignore this deep post, essentially. But in this case, and let me get these guys on contains, he's actually gonna run with him. Sometimes he doesn't get the best leverage, but you see he takes them all the way up the field and you can help out there. So 
you know, a few months in, but the ability for this guy to cover that post, um, where my defense here to cover that post. And, and the other thing is switching the trips assignment to special really is allowing cover six to be viable now. Whereas before they were, you know, first of all, this guy was static. And then on this case, you were running, um, just regular, like a, like a solo coverage against these guys where this guy would be man to man with number one. This guy would stay underneath. This safety would cover number two vertical. And then you have nobody for number three vertical. This guy can't cover him because he's covering this side of the field. So what's left is the three receiver hook who would either get glitched out or he'd be too slow to run with the number three. So I think, you know, for quarters, this guy should never be running vertical. He should always just be walling off the three receiver hook underneath. Or, you know, in, in certain cases, if, if he has to help out in the flat in special. But yeah, he should never have to carry a streak. And I'm, I'm glad they're starting to take that out. So let's just show you over here, like how this could have been detrimental before where this strong safety uh, here was really just passive over here. And then if you have vertical routes on this side, you're not going to have any safety to help out over here. And you just be free over there in the past. But in this case, you guys actually running with running with the post. So that's really, really nice. The one kind of thing I want to say about the downside of this is that you can't really be as aggressive against the run. So you can definitely still bring down this guy, but you can't really bring down this safety. First of all, because he's not in the run fit. So he's going to do a bail to his half anyway, but he's got to cover the vertical of the number one over here. So if he's way up in the box here, he probably won't be able to do that. So that's one thing. Now you, you do have a, a force defender on this side from the cloud flat, but you know, especially against trips, which most people are running, what's he going to do? Cause nobody's running counter. Okay. So that's, you know, one downside of it, but you know, if you're coming up against somebody that's really, you know, heavy on the run game, I uh, would, I would use a lot more, um, cover four palms where you can bring both of these safeties right into the box and be aggressive. No problem at all. Or you can go to some of the other things that will, that will go into here. Now there are a few other, there are two other really big concerns with running um, cover four, and that's with corner routes from the number three receiver and comeback routes from the number one wide receiver. And, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. So yeah, let's just get back into that level sail play that we we're originally in, in the trips tight end here, because it does a really good job at explaining the issues we have here. And let's just go into, let's go back into cover six. Okay, trips tight end, double in sale. Okay, so again, special. This straight safety has number three vertical. Okay, so what that means is that, say, a corner route, he has him vertical. And I'll show you how that turns out. Sometimes catastrophically poorly. <laughs> okay, sometimes, you know, it, you know, you can, if your opponent throws it not too well, you can undercut it. And it, it's hard for me because I don't have four arms. But sometimes you can undercut that and actually get an interception and it works for you. But, you know, if the wide receiver doesn't have as good a route running, they can usually just do this all day long. So this is something that I've noticed lately and it's becoming a really, really big issue for me. Okay, you know, on this case over here, the corner route is actually played pretty well. Like even if I, even if I went back to standard um, palms, you see the cornerback actually plays that really well. Now I could easily just click onto that, or you know even the CPU does does its job because the alignment is good. Now this is one of those cases over here where even if you have a significantly worse wide receiver, he can get this corner, he can beat this safety outside in the corner because. You know, there's still an issue here where wide receivers are running at full speed and then the defensive back is flat footed and then it, he's always going to lose. It's not a situation where you get a really good um, 
defensive back here and he can shut that down though if he has speed you can sometimes catch up and undercut that like i was saying but again you know you can do this over and over again just like that and then if you got a speed advantage from the wide receiver you can turn that upfield so some really big issues there um the other issue is comeback routes from the number one wide receiver so if I have time in the pocket here, I can show you this. And of course I don't. Let's put him in a contain. So this comeback route is devastating. You can do that all the way up and down the field. And sometimes you can, you know, you have so much separation that you can get reset and then you can take on that cornerback again. So you can, you know, you can juke him or spin him or get a broken tackle like I just did there. And even with press coverage, let's just get these guys out of the way. Even with press coverage, he's going to get wide open. You can do that all the way up and down the field. Now, I don't have an issue with some routes being better against cover four. Um, and I don't have an issue of it, you know, that route getting open in general. But you could probably put the worst wide receiver in the game against the best cornerback in the game and he'd get open there. So I don't like that, and I feel like that guy should play that better. Now, of course, this is still somewhat rare, so you don't come across this too much, but sometimes your opponent will be doing that. And I can do other things, like I can man him up, and he should still get open if I have time in the pocket. Just like that. Now, he actually does a pretty good job against deep out routes. Let's go ahead and run a deep out. He's kind of right on there. You can still fit that in, but he's much better on that. And that's what I would like to see. A tighter window, a contested throw, contested catch. Sorry. Okay, so I have no problem with a comeback route working against this coverage, but I have a problem working uh, of it working that well every single time. So things that we should do about that. Now, of course, if we're running cover six, it's going to be shut down to the weak side because that comeback route is not going to work against the cloud, obviously. He's just going to sink right underneath that. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Got confused at what his button was. But you see how he sinks right under underneath that. So, there's a few things that I've been working on that we can do. Um, so, the one thing is with something called stress coverage. Okay, I, I showed you in the last one that against trips, palms play special. Against trips, quarters play solo. But there's another check called stress that, you know, isn't actually in the game, but we can make kind of like a pseudo version of it. So what we can do is put... Instead of a situation where you have this guy manned up, this guy possibly manned up, and this guy possibly manned up on these wide, three wide receivers... What you can do is you can kind of split one and two with a deep third or a deep half even. Sorry. Or a deep half from this corner. Probably deep third is better. And then you would change this quarter flat to something like a cloud flat or a curl flat. Now, unfortunately, you can't manually assign him to that. This is kind of stupid. Like you have, all, you have eight different hot routes, defensive hot routes, but most of them are like mid read, you know, deep half right, outside third right, that like are totally useless here. You know, slot defenders are most times in a flat zone, but you don't have any flat zone adjustments. So that's kind of insane. Um, so you have to unfortunately um, modify the entire defense. Now that's not an issue if you're running cover six because it doesn't change the other side. You can just shade, shade up or shade down and up. Um, but if you're running palms, you're going to lose that quarter flat on the other side. So that's definitely something to note. But let's just show you how this pseudo um, cover six, or sorry, pseudo cover four stress on one side can deal with this. So in this case, that cornerback is going to get over the top of number one and number two. And you'll have this flat zone here drifting underneath that curl. Or sorry, that comeback. 
So I'll show you right now if I have time in the pocket. And if you're a user, you can um, you can click onto that. So he's at least going to give you a contested catch there. Now, if you put a cloud flat there, he'll do even better against that. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to use a curl or a flat in this pseudo stress coverage deal. Other things against this corner route, you can do the exact same thing. And you actually don't in this case, you don't even need the to adjust that quarter flat. You can just leave that deep third there because he's going to ignore that number one coming underneath. And then if you throw this, you'll be contested there and you can get a pick. Okay, so this is something to work in sometimes. Like you wouldn't put this all the time because again, the, the special check is really, really nice in this game. This quarter flat is really nice. You don't want to have to lose him every time. But if you suspect your opponent is going to run that, that, that comeback to you or that, or that corner, then this is something you can do. And it's just as simple as changing this corner to a deep third. So triangle, triangle, square up and then just shading over the top or shading down and over the top so you can have that cloud flat drift underneath any corners or um, um, or the comeback. And you don't need to just do this on cover six. Again, you know, if I go back here to a regular palms, you can, you can do the same thing. Just note that you're gonna be losing the quarter flat over here. Okay, but you're, you're still gonna be good. Um, against a situation where where like this where normally this guy has to run vertically with number two but now he's sinking underneath the comeback so that deep third now needs to run with him and actually that that other safety will double team him if there's nothing deep from number three so it's nice. It'd be nice if that was actually in the game, and then we can just we can pick cover four, and we can choose our own trips checks. We can check check special. We can do solo. We can do um, stress um, from actual programming without having to you know do it ourselves. But um, it's definitely a nice option for now. Okay, other things. Let's go. Let's look at all the other things that are available to us. Cover six. Invert, okay, so cover six trap is just cover six, except the cloud flat from the weak side corner is a soft squat instead of a cloud flat. So you can make that adjustment yourself. There's no reason for this cover six trap play. That's just one quick adjustment. And I think I don't really like how the soft squat plays. It'll give you, leave you a little bit, you know, he plays a little bit. He can match sometimes a man to man on that wide receiver over there, but I don't think it's necessary. So I, I would forget about that. Cover six invert is essentially kind of a cover four on one side and cover three in a way, or a cover two invert on the other side actually is what it's more like where the deep half is coming from the corner and the flat is coming from the safety. So I probably wouldn't run that because I think the cover two does a better job than the cover two invert. But what it does allow you to do is put that safety back in the run fit. So if you want to have split field coverage, and also be aggressive with a nine-man box, this is something you can do. Okay, so there isn't too much else to say about that one other than the fact that it's split field, it's cover six, um, but you're switching the assignment of the cornerback and the safety. So now the safety can be in the run fit again, and the safety is in the flat, and the cornerback is the deep half. And I believe he should cover that, that deep post as well. Cover nine. Cover nine is good and bad. So we're going to call cover nine. We're going to come back in here and same play. So cover nine, as far as I can tell, is just flipped cover six. Okay, so now the cover two side is to the strength of the offense and the cover four side is to the weak side. So this is something good to call, again, because if you're running any corner routes over here, he's going to go right into that cloud. And that, you know, that, that deep half that's staying home. Now, you, again, you want to disguise this because you, you don't want it to be obvious that you're running cover two on that side. So, you know, running a press situation or even backing this guy way off so it looks like you're in cover four on that side could be a, a good situation for you. So think about that when you run it. But the thing I would be wary about about running cover nine a lot is that this safety also now has some match rules into him. 
he's not just passive. So I told you, I showed you in the last one that if he's on the weak side and a cover six, he's going to take any deep posts. But in this case, he also does the same. And I don't know if he should or not, because I think you have enough help over here from this guy to take crossers. Maybe I think this guy should take a late crosser from the number one, but I don't think anything else because, and I actually, I'm going to have to check out of this because there are a lot of situations where you can be really exposed. So let's go PA shot wheel, big nickel, cover nine. And I'll just run this stock with contains. So you see how the safety, no, in that case, actually that, that guy played it pretty well. But let's go into the instant replay here. So I think the what the safety is doing is taking the first deep crossing vertical deep. So you see, normally he'd be a deep half, but he's actually taking this crosser all the way across the field. And what that means is that something from this guy over here will get open, although I think that vert hook actually did a pretty good job. Um, who is somebody you might be using, and then in, the, in that case, you know, you might be out of luck because maybe you're not taking that guy deep. Um, I think if I put this guy on a fade, yeah. So that's where you are susceptible. So I think there's still some coverage rules with the cover nine deep half that should be accounted for. I think he should always be on top of everything. Okay, so he should pass off that crosser to, he should pass off that crosser really to the other safety and then he should pick up on that deep post and then that cloud should take the wheel in this case or you know it's even easier if this guy's on a, on a on a drag but i don't think that safety should be taking the first deep crosser that comes across because again just like that you can fit this guy in so be very wary of cover nine Okay, it's a good way, a really good way to stop those comebacks and those corners on the strength. Um, but um, you are exposed. Okay, whereas cover the little stress check that I gave you, um, you're, you're a little bit more sound. But again, you know, we don't want to be too predictable. We want to switch it up. Okay, so that's cover nine. Talked about cover six, cover six trap, cover six invert. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is four lock palms before ending this video. So four lock palms, and let's go back over here. So four lock palms is actually really interesting. I kind of wrote it off earlier towards the year, but I'm running it a lot more now. So what you're essentially doing over here on the weak side, so the weak side is going to be man to man here where the cornerback is man-to-man -man on number one and the safety is man-to-man -man on number two. Which is almost almost identical with what you would have with, uh, whoops, say palms, except it's a little bit inverted. So this guy's gonna have man-to-man -man on number one, except in this case, you know, where he um, he's passed off inside out with the safety, but let, let's just pretend that it's a normal case. Actually, let's just go ahead and move him out there. So he's gonna have man-to-man -man with number one, and then this quarter flat is actually man-to-man -man on number two, which is the running back. So doing four lock palms switches this safety to man-to-man -man on the running back. You're still man-to-man -man over here, and then now you have an extra curl flat player over here to drift underneath, you know, say if you're having a comeback route from, from this guy over here, this curl flat will drift underneath him, or you know you can put him in a hard flat to give you a little bit extra help, or you can use him yourself and take any crossers that are coming deep because you know the curl flat won't be able to do that. Um, again, you're going to be a little bit more sound against the run because your safety is in the run fit. Other things, if your running back is blocking, that safety now becomes a spy. Okay, so, so that's something to take into account. Maybe you don't want to add a spy on the defensive line. Maybe you can use him. Or you can come into a situation where if you see that the running black back is blocking, well, you can click in on the right stick and send that blitz. 
Okay, so a lot of nice things there. The last thing I want to say is you're actually pretty safe running four lock palms flipped. So man to man on the strength over here. So you're going to have man to man on these guys and this safety, although he is, you know, really out leverage in terms of a position standpoint, he is going to take number three vertical. So just like this. And he actually doesn't get glitched out like he does in cover four quarters solo. So as long as, you know, you have decent speed there or, you know, you, know, you can move him a little bit closer so he does a little bit better, you're going to be safe there. But again, it's another thing that we can do against corners and comebacks. Where that curl flat... Aye. Let's flip this. Where this safety actually has to take that corner. So you're not actually in a great situation because I don't think this curl flat does a good job of going underneath the corner. So you can actually... Uh, you can't put him in a cloud flat without ruining this quarter flat over here. So that's that's kind of a bummer. Um, but maybe this you can undercut that corner with the safety. Uh, so maybe it's not great against quarters, but uh, sorry against corners, but it should be good against the comebacks where that curl flat can drift underneath that. Okay, so I gave you three options to cover corners and comebacks from the strength. So running cover nine um, is a good mix up. Running the pseudo cover for stress and then running the four lock palms flipped. The, it's not as good um, against the, the corner, but it's gonna be safe against that comeback route. Okay, and then added to that, I, I gave you the cover six, the standard cover six which is going to do a much better job against these, you know, mesh, meshing concepts um, where you have a slant or a drag for number one. And although these things are being used to check for some of these, you know, good passing concepts against cover four quarters or cover four match, it also really adds the benefit of disguise where we're not going to be static cover four match on both sides of the field. Sometimes we'll run cover two on one side or man coverage on one side or we'll flip that cover two on the other side, cover four, and really keep our opponent, you know, on their toes. I've been doing this a lot lately. It's been working a lot for me. Um, if you're running this too high matching cover four scheme, you should not be running it the whole time. And then your adjustments out of it really shouldn't be switching your entire defense to cover three or cover two, because there are some good things here, really underused things that we can add into the mix. Okay, so that's that's it for this one, guys. I hope you guys liked it. Again, you know, this isn't gonna be the last one, so you definitely wanna stay subscribed, stay with the notifications so you get the next one first. And um, hopefully we can add some more to this and, and really make it, a, make it a fun fun defense that we know a lot more about. Okay, so that's it for this one, and we'll see you in the next one.